I'm Patrick Bailey with whiteboardcoder.com. Today is November 3rd, 2019. And in this video, I'll be showing how I'm going to set up my uh, guest Wi-Fi, which is a Ubiquiti AC Pro, in such a manner that it's on its own LAN and it will be able to access, it'll be, it'll be restricted so that it can access my printer in my private LAN, but nothing else. It can get to the internet, but it can't affect my other network. Therefore, I can give people who visit my house my guest password on the guest Wi-Fi, and I don't need to worry so much about them affecting my network. So with that, let's get going to show how to set it up in PFSense. First, let's go over my setup so I can explain what I'm doing better. Uh, I have a video out here, which I'll link to, and I'll show a little, well, I won't show it a bit here, but I uh, did build a PFSense dedicated box. And what I did is I built some, I, built, I bought this thing, uh, from PC Engines, an APU2C4. And what it is, is basically like a little small computer, it runs PFSense great, and it has multiple ethernet ports. In fact, the one I bought has three ethernet ports in the back, uh, and they have other versions too. So if you go on the website, this is the one I bought, an APU2C4, but they have other ones like an AP4C4. Uh, also, I bought this from minibox.com, but you can go watch that video if you're interested in something that's low power, dedicated device to run PFSense. I liked it. It did a good job and I'm very happy with my results so far. In fact, I'd probably buy another one. Uh, but with that in mind, I've got that set up and I'm using two of the ports. One for my connection to the out to the internet to my cable box and the other for my internal network connected to a switch. But I had the idea that I wanted to go make uh, build a guest Wi-Fi. So what I did is I went out and I bought a... Oh, here it is. And I'll put a link to this show in the show notes here. Here's a link. Uh, I'll put a link in the show notes to it this at Amazon. I bought a Ubiquiti, uh, let's see, UAP AC Pro uh, Wi-Fi, and I put it on its own network. So the idea would be, I already have it plugged in and working right now, um, and I have it plugged in to the third Ethernet connection. So my thought is I can go into PFSense, connect it all up, and isolate it completely. So therefore, I can get... Um, I can freely give out the guest Wi-Fi password to people who visit, my kids, friends, and whatnot, have them log in, have them use the internet. Also, give it the ability to cross over into my regular private LAN and print out to my printer, which has a static IP address, but that's it. So I don't have to worry about them getting over and messing with anything, and they'll be isolated. Um, so that's my plan. Also, I bought a second Wi-Fi for my private network so that I can log into that and do things and people in the, who live in my house can log my kids or certain things they can log in there and not worry about it also with the guest wi-fi um it might be an opportunity to connect your internet of things so if you have anything that's an internet of thing that you don't care so much about like a garage door opener that happens to want to connect to the internet you can connect it to that and then it won't be able to get into your network so anyway interesting idea so that's my setup that's what I'm going to do so now with that let's get started in pfsense Okay, uh, before I get to going too far, a video that you might want to consider watching is this one, 2018 Getting Started with PFSense 2.4 from Install to Secure, Install Multiple Separate Networks. Uh, and this is done by Lawrence Systems PC Pickup, and it's a great job. In fact, I, I have a link over here at the minute, uh, 2558 on. And this is, the first part is kind of covering what I'm going to do, adding an additional thing on via that port, even extra ethernet port and doing a little bit of security rules. So that's what I'll be doing and almost following him, following him verbatim until I get to the point where I'm starting to do some more set up uh, uh, complicated firewall rules. So it might be interesting to watch his video, uh, especially if you're new. So he's done a really great job. Okay, so now that I have that all plugged in, I just need, first thing I'm gonna do is set up the interface. So I come in here, log into PFSense like I already have, go to interfaces and go to assignments. And here you can see I already have my WAN set up, my LAN set up. That's my own secure LAN, if you want to call it that. And then I have my available ports. That's my third port. So if you have a different PC engine, you might have four ports. Mine just has three, so I know exactly which one it is. And I'll hit Add. And now this option one comes up. And so now I'll click on that. I'll enable it. And now I'll call it uh, Guest LAN. And let's see, we'll say static IPv4. And... There we go, no preference. And IP address, I'll say 192.168.10.1. Uh, for those who may not know, if you have different networks, you don't want them to be on the same address space. And so I'm just making this a different space. So it's gonna be 10.1 rather than 0 0.1. And then rather than 32, I'll say a slash 26. And I think that should be good. And I'll hit save. And then apply the changes. 
And then it makes a note there. Don't forget to adjust the DHCP server range, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's a few more things. So right now, if I were to go on to that Wi-Fi, that guest Wi-Fi, I couldn't do anything. I'm firewalled off. I have no DHCP. So I need to set up, set up a few more things. So I'll go here to services first, DHCP server. I'll go on to the guest LAN. That's one we just made. I'll enable it. And I'll come down here and I'll set a range 192.168.10.2, 192.168.10.2. And I think that's all I got to do. And hit save. So I got that going for us. And the next thing, if I log in now, I still can't do anything because my firewall rules. I have no firewall rules. If you have no firewall rules, um, nothing will go through at all. So I'll go here, click on firewall, click on rules. And here I can see there's my WAN LAN and guest LAN. So I'll go to my guest LAN and I'll add a rule. Now I've hit this add here with the up button. It will go to the, the rule will be applied to the top. If it add the bottom, it will be applied to the bottom, but you can always move them after the fact. So, but there's none yet, so it doesn't matter which one you press. So I'll just click this button and I'll say, okay, I want to pass everything from the guest LAN. This action will be a pass, IPv4, uh, TCP, but I want to do any, so I want any protocol to go through. And then I'll say from any source to any destination, you're allowed to go through. And I'll hit save. And I have to apply this change. And so now we should be set up. So now if I go over and hook on to this Wi-Fi after this loads, um, I should be able to get anywhere, which includes everything, everything into my network. So what I'll do, I'll leave it, leave it like that just to show it. So let me go over here and I will log in. Oh, I'm already logged in. Okay, I'll log into there but I'll disconnect my ethernet. So now my ethernet's connected, so I'm only connected into my guest Wi-Fi. So hopefully if I did this right, I should be able to see the internet. There we go, so I run a speed test real quick just to show that, yep, I can talk to the internet. And I have disconnected my ethernet over here, so I'm only on this guest Wi-Fi. But now there's a couple of troubling things about this guest Wi-Fi. So first of all, if I go over back onto my PFSense, and if I refresh it, I can get to my PFSense, and I don't want them to get here. Also, if I look over here and I'll start to ping some stuff, I can ping, in, so I can ping in my internal network, 192.168.0.99, that happens to be a server, and I can hit it. Uh, let's see, I got a 5.3 server, and I can hit it. And I have a 2.2 server, which is my, uh, my um, printer has a static IP address. I do want to hit that, but I only want to be able to hit that. So right now I can hit everything and that's not what I want. So next up, how do I isolate, how do I add more firewall rules to isolate this so that it can't talk to my private network? Okay, now I plug back in my ethernet just to make sure I, everything works just fine as intended here. Okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a few more firewall rules. So I'll go over here back to firewall rules and back to my guest LAN. And so now I want my guest LAN, I want to allow it to get to port, allow it to get to 192.168.0.22, which is my static IP for my printer. But I don't want to allow it anywhere else. Uh, well, I want it to allow it there and the internet, but not to my other LAN. So what I'll do is I'll add another couple rules. So now if I add a rule, and so I want it to block. Now there's block and reject. Block, um, I could reject it, but in this case, block it. They won't be able to get there and they won't know, go, want to get information back from it as if it's like a black hole. And so I'll say guest LAN. So anything from the guest LAN, IPv4, and I'll say any, not just TCP. And so from here, I'll say what I want to do is say source is any, and the destination will be the uh, LAN net, which is what my other LAN is called. It just happened to be called LAN. I could have called it something else. Um, in fact, maybe I should change its name. Yeah, like it. Let's go change its name to make it a little more specific. So I'll click on this LAN and I'll say private LAN. Private LAN. And save. Apply the changes. Uh, do I have to adjust the DHCP? Well, I guess we'll see. Let me go to server, DHCP server, private LAN. Okay, that's still fine. 
Okay, firewall rules, guest land, and we'll make another rule, and we'll make this rule um, the top rule. Because we want it to be applied first. So we'll say block. It has to be the, the traffic has to come from the guest land, and we'll say the source is any, and the destination is going to be the private land net. So I'll click on that. And da, da, da. so if I go over here, you'll see land net. So in my case, private land net, basically that's anything on that subnet. There's a land address and that's the actual address uh, for the interface. And that's not what I, that's not only what I want. I want the interface and everything else. So I'll come on here and I'll say private land net. Good and save. So now that's going to block. Let me apply the, apply the changes. So it says, hey, if you're on here, I'm going to apply the, I, I follow the rules in order. There are some more subtleties to that, but for our, for what we're doing, just follow it in order. So if I can be applied, I work. So if I'm from this source, if I'm on my, my uh, guest Wi-Fi and I'm going to my private LAN, block me and I'm done. Don't even go, don't, don't do anything, anything else. If I'm on my private LAN, my, my guest LAN, and I'm going to the internet, this first rule doesn't apply, but the second one would, and I can get out. Um, so now let me, we should be good. So let me, uh, we'll test this, because right now I'm on, I'm still plugged in. So I should be able to ping uh, 2 2, right? I can ping it just fine, but now I'll come in here and I'll say, let me see, ping in 20, and I'll unplug my Ethernet. At some point, I should start getting denied. Why am I not getting denied? Okay, I found the culprit. I didn't save it quite right. So if I go over here to private LAN, I'll edit this again. Click on edit. And what I did is I did TCP. I, so TCP, if I remember correct, I, I, if I'm remembering correctly, ICMP is your ping. So if I did TCP, of course, ping's going to work, but I can't log in. Uh, so it depends on what you want. If you want to be able to ping things, eh, you know, you can set up more, some more rules. But for me, I want any. So I'll change that to any now. And I'll description, I'll say uh, block guest Wi-Fi from land. So I'm private land. Come on. Private land. And hit save. Apply those changes. And right now I'm plugged into the Ethernet again. So now, now, let's see if we do that. So now if I ping this, I'm connected to the ethernet, it's pinging just fine. If I unplug it, perfect, we're getting blocked. Hooray. So I can't ping that, I can't ping anything, 99. I can't SSH into anything. So I am totally blocked from the 192.168.0 network. Actually, anything on that interface. So however you set it up, cool, life is good. And that's partially what I want. But now I got two problems. One, I do want to get to my printer. So now I can add a new rule. Uh, now, if I try to go to this interface, 192.168.0.1, if I hit a refresh here, it'll fail because I can't get there. Which that is good. I don't want my guest to be able to get to this, but I got two problems. One is I want to be, I want to update it so I can get to my, my uh, printer. The other one is there actually is a 192.68.10.1, which is the interface to this guy. And I can get to that. And that does allow me to tweak everything. It's another thing I need to fix. So I'll, I'll, I'll fix that in a second. But for right now, let's fix, it, fix the printer. So now I'm on 192.68.10.1. I'll go to rules, go to guest LAN. I will add a new rule. I'll just put it at the bottom for now. And I'll say, I want to pass anything from the guest LAN. Uh, I'll say any, and I'll say any, and then I'll say single host. In this case, I'll do 192. Dot one six eight dot zero dot uh, twenty two, and that's my IP address of my printer. And I'll say, what do I say? Uh, guest Wi-Fi access to printer. 
hit save, hit apply, and now I can't ping 99 anymore, but I should have pinged 22. He says, oh wait, I can't yet because of my ordering. So what it does, it comes down here and says, hey, block the first rule. Am I coming from my guest LAN? Yes. Am I going to my private LAN? And I am if I'm going to my printer and it applies this rule and blocks it. So I need to move my rules around a little bit. So what I need to do is I will take this guy, click on this little anchor, and he'll be number one now. So he only applies, and then I just hit save and apply changes. So now he'll get applied first. Am I coming from my guest land? Am I going to my printer? Yes, cool, you're safe, you're allowed. Uh, but any place else, I'm gonna get blocked from my private land. Anything else beyond that, I will get out to my internet. So now, now that I've changed that, boom, I can ping my printer. And I can print on my printer, which if you're doing that, you probably want to do a couple of test prints. I did it yesterday, life was good. And see, I can't hit anything else. So, so far, I nearly have what I want done. The only problem I have right now is I can get to 192.168.10.1. I want to block that. So I, would, I don't want anybody who's on my guest Wi-Fi to be able to edit PFSense and then basically give them all the permissions to get everywhere. So let me show you how to fix that. Okay, so the next step depends on what you need and what you want. Now, I'm getting this all from this article, Restricting Access to the Web GUI. This is what I'll be applying, basically. So you can go, I'll put a link in the show notes to this, and this is probably the best one to use, and I'll be using most of it, uh, because my needs are a little different. So now if I go back on my interface, I look at my private LAN. My private LAN by default, and this is how they do it in PFSense, they basically don't want you to mess yourself up. So there's actually an anti-lockout rule on your, on your default LAN you set up. And that basically says, hey, everything from the private, private LAN address is allowed and doesn't lock out 443 and lets you in, lets everybody in. So good. I have no need to change that. So anyone who's on my private LAN can get to this. And that's okay by me for my network. If you want to lock this down, you could probably follow uh, more of what the rules are in here and you could lock it down further. I'm not going to. I just want to lock down the guest LAN. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I need to create a couple aliases. So I'll go over here on the firewall, create aliases, and I hit IP, and I'll create the IP one just for completeness, although I'm not going to use it, I don't think. I used it last night, but I don't think I need to for what I'm doing. So I'll click Add, and looking over their rules, they over here, I'll call it Management Access. Management Access. Okay, and I'll say uh, host that can host that are allowed to um, log in to PF. Yes, sense, right? And so I'll come down here and I'll say hosts. Let's see, do I want to say hosts? Networks. I'll say networks. In this case, I'll say networks. And I'll come down here and say 192.168.0.1 slash uh, 24, uh, and I'll say I call it my private LAN just for description. And then from here, I could add more stuff. So I could just do a single IP address. I could limit this however I want. And this is who is allowed, who you're going to, you could use this alias to see who you want to let in. In my case, I don't want to let anybody in. So I'm just use, doing this for completeness, but I'm actually not going to use this one. I don't think. So I hit save. Apply that change. I'll go to ports next and I'll hit add. And I'll say management ports, right? Management ports, uh, ports uh, for PF sense, right? And I'll say ports and I'll say 22 sh add a port 443 and HTTPS, right? Um, yeah, I hope it doesn't go on port 80, does it? Uh, I never thought about that. Or will it actually... Yeah, it'll open on port 80 and fling you over. I'll, I'll add port 80. Uh, 
even though you don't really need to because it, it would open up and fling you right to port 443, so it's not going to do anything, but I'll add port 80. I hit save, apply the change, and so now I'll go to my firewall rules, and my private land is fine. I don't want to change that for my case. My guest land is what I want to change. I want to block it. So I'll come down here and I'll add a new rule, and I'll say block. Block, origin from the guest land, and I'll say the source needs to be any, any from this guest land. So that's that's from this source, and my destination is going to be um, this firewall. So there's this firewall, which is this firewall, and so I'll use my management ports as my alias. So I'll say management ports all the way to management ports. And so what's going to say is, hey, anything from this guest, guest land can't get to the firewall on ports 80, 443, and, and 22. So I'll hit save and hit apply. And I think we should be good. Um, now, if I was going to do this on the other side, I would probably add another rule that says the management ports. Well, let me just do it. What they suggest doing, and I'll add it, but I don't think I need it. You say pass, guest LAN, um, single host or a single host or alias. Manage. You start to type this in, it fills it out for you. Management access, and I'll say to the firewall, and I'll say management ports, management ports. Uh, oh, and this is just a TCP protocol, so I didn't do any on this. I just did TCP, and I should, uh, I could be IPv4 and 6, but I'll, I guess I don't need to, uh, and hit save. And the idea, if I apply these changes, this, I believe, is redundant. So um, if you wanted to only let certain things in, you would do this first one like this, management access, management ports, then block everybody else. So in this case, if you had a rule set up like this on your LAN, you'd say, hey, let these guys in and disallow anybody else. So now if I apply this, I should be fine. Right now I'm plugged into my ethernet so I can still see this. But right now I'm going to, I'm pretty sure I'm right. I'm gonna edit this one and I'm gonna disable the rule that lets it pass in because I don't believe I need that in this case. So I'll save that. This is now disabled. Well, after I apply the change, it will be. So now what it should say is, hey, if you are trying to hit the firewall and you are from the guest land, you just won't be able to get through. And after that, if you happen to be trying to hit the, the if you try happen to try to be hitting the printer, port 20, uh, I, I address 22, you can get through. Beyond that, if you're trying to hit my other network, the private land, you can't. And then beyond that, you can get everywhere. So I think my rules are good. And so let me unplug everything to unplug my uh, ethernet. And so now I'm just on the guest Wi-Fi. And if I try to reload this, even based on our old rules, the 192.168.01 wouldn't reload. But just to confirm, we're not reloading. Good. Spinning. But now hopefully we've blocked off 192.68.10.1. There we go. So that can't be reached. I just like to watch that fail. That can't be reached. Ping 99, can't get there. Ping 22, I can get there. Cool, so I have everything set up exactly how I want. Can't be reached. Now let me just as a double check, plug in my ethernet back in. So now I'm on my private LAN and I should be able to get both to both of these. Yep. And slowly but surely. Or did I block everything? Does that mean everything gets blocked? Oh, that's interesting. That's why. So right now on the guest LAN, which controls the 192.610.0, it says, hey, block everybody from it. That's why, uh, not that I need it, but I'm, I just blocked myself from that 10 address. Let me edit this, enable this. Okay, so that's why you edit. I learned something new by doing this video. 
Okay, so now that's been applied. So now I should be able to get to this. In theory, come on. Let me disconnect from my Wi-Fi just to cover that base. I don't think that's a problem. Okay, I can get in. I'm just confused on that. Let me do one more test. Let me let me disable this again. And I think if I disable this, I can't, even though I'm on the 192.6801 network, I'm guessing I can't get to the firewall at 10.1 because I told it to block everybody. That's been applied. Now if I go here and refresh, nope, I can get in. Okay, that, okay, now that confirms my thinking because here, if I look at this, okay, that's right. This applies to the rules coming from the guest LAN. I'm not coming from the guest LAN, so I can get here. Cool. And as a double check, because now that I've switched it back, let me connect back up to uh, my guest Wi-Fi, unplug my Ethernet, and then refresh this and refresh this. So my 192.6801 and my 10.0, and they both should die off. But again, I can't ping 99, but I can ping 22. Perfect. Uh, okay, so that's it. Oh, and then I'll do one last test. I'll plug my Ethernet back in because my 192.6801 network, which I'm on now because of my Ethernet, I can get to my guest LAN. So my guest LAN has my Wi-Fi. So if I try to do SSH to 10.3, I can get to that Wi-Fi. So I can get to them. They can't get to me. So if I need to get to my Wi-Fi, that's a nice thing because maybe I need to go log in there to adjust something. I don't know, but anyway. So now reload that. We're good. Reload this. It probably won't work because I'm on both. Interesting. Okay, but there you go. So now I'm, how, I'm exactly how I want. I got my PF sense set up in such a way that my guest Wi-Fi, I can... I don't want to say safely because there's always somebody who's hacking something, right? But more safely, the, I should be set up pretty well and pretty well firewalled off. So anybody who gets on my guest Wi-Fi can't get into my private LAN. Anyway, I'm set up. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a like. To subscribe, just click the subscribe button. Also, you can follow me on Twitter under the handle at whiteboardcoder.com. View any code I may have thrown up as a gist uh, at GitHub under the username Patman Denver, or check out my blog site at whiteboardcoder.com.